Hi everyone, this is Tanya Milan from the Self Sufficient Homestead and we are on episode 3 of our canning series. Last time we spoke about different preservation methods like water bath canning and pressure canning but this week we're going to find out why there are different methods of canning. Why can't we just water bath can everything? Or why can't we just pressure can everything? Well, there's a really good explanation and it's an explanation that you need to take note of because this will keep your family safe. So for the purpose of today, we are going to place foods in two groups today. This is how we will determine what method to use. So the two groups we have today is a high acid group and a low acid group. So firstly, our high acid food group are fruits. Things like apples, pawpaw, pears, I've got some crab apple here. And things that are typically canned are things like peaches, apricots, quinces, strawberries. I just don't have those lovely fruits at the moment because we are in the middle of winter. So this is what I have. So fruits are high acid. Low acid foods, however, are things like red meat, chicken, fish, legumes. Here I've got some beans from the garden, some peas, and also vegetables, beetroot, onion, carrots, be green beans, you name it. All of these are low acid foods. But there is one food that you need to be careful of, and it's the tomato. The tomato is a fruit, so it should in essence be a high acid food. Some of the varieties out there are low acid tomatoes. So for the purpose of safety, I always take my tomatoes and I put them in the low acid food group because you never know if you've got low or high acid tomatoes. So now that we've got the two groups sorted out, high acid and low acid, we need to understand what influences these two groups to determine what method of preservation to use. All around us, we have many microorganisms, such as bacteria, mold, yeasts. And also in our fruits and vegetables, we have something called enzymes, which is responsible for breaking food down further. So in essence, we want to kill any fungi and we want to destroy enzymes. Now, to kill molds and yeasts, we need to understand it. Mold and yeast thrives on acid. So if we're saying this is high acid food, mold and yeasts will thrive on this. Be it if it's left on the counter, cut open or in a bottle, it will thrive. So we need to be able to kill it. Mold and yeasts and enzymes are killed by heat. So if we use the water bath canning method, we kill off any mold or yeast spores as well as enzymes. The temperature of water bath canning water is maximum boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So water cannot boil higher than this in normal circumstances, but boiling point is more than enough to kill off your fungi and enzymes. So that is why high acid foods are safely preserved with water bath canning. There are also other traditional methods where uh, the, the fruit is boiled and then placed in a sterile bottle and closed up which is traditional methods being used. And it's the same principle. The water bath canning principle is just safer because you've already got everything inside the bottle. It's sealed and then it's water bath can. So there's not an opportunity for anything else to get into the bottle. But if you're doing it the traditional way, your bottle is open, you're putting in the hot contents and you're closing it up. So there was a time where there was openings and molds and yeasts are in the air, they can get into it, and then you could get mold and yeast inside your bottle. 
So this is why I recommend water bath canning. Right. So next up, we've got our low acid foods. So what is the problem with water bath canning low acid foods? Why do we need Why do we need this guy to preserve our low acid foods? Well, as discussed with water bath canning, water boils at boiling point. And depending on what sea level you are, your altitude is what temperature it boils at. But it's, it stays the same. You can be boiling water on your stove in an open pot for an hour and it will stay exactly the same temperature. We have bacteria around us that are not killed at boiling point. So how will we ever get the temperature higher to kill those bacteria? This is where the pressure canner comes in. This is a Bastafield canner, a 40 liter, and I fit quite a lot of bottles in here. But what happens with the pressure canner is you've got water at the bottom, you've got your bottles inside already sealed, and you build up pressure. The moment you apply pressure, and depending on your altitude, and we'll discuss this in detail still in a future video, depending on your altitude will be what pressure you need to reach. The moment you've got the necessary pressure, your temperature of your water would have risen exponentially above your boiling point at sea level. And this will mean that you can eradicate bacteria which would not be eradicated with just boiling point water. Because now you will have water with a temperature which is sufficient to kill bacteria. Now one of the stubborn bacterias out there is commonly known as botulism. Now, this is another one which we will do a whole episode on because it's imperative to understand botulism and how it works. One thing, however, we have to know now in this video is that we have to have a method that kills off botulism spores and any other bacteria to make our food shelf stable and safe for our families to eat. So guys, this is why we use this bad boy for all these low acid foods. Now that's another thing that could be baffling you at the moment. You've seen beans, beetroot, and maybe carrots in a, in a bottle that have not been pressure canned. How is that even possible? And how could that be safe? Now remember, we spoke about acid groups, low acid and high acid. So you have the ability to change the acid level in your foods by simply using lemon or vinegar. This is my homemade raisin vinegar. I've got a video on the channel if you want to go check out to make it. So you can change the acid levels and then you would not need a pressure canner, but your food will be very acidic. I do not enjoy acidic food. So I would rather just stick to pressure canning my food. One thing to remember when you do want to change the acid level in your foods, so you do not have to pressure can, use an approved recipe. That way you know you are safe. Okay guys, so that's it for today's video. Our next video I will be explaining botulism in detail. You will understand how botulism works and why it's such a danger. And you will also understand exactly how we kill it off. Right guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.